what's going on guys apathetic here and today i'm gonna be covering a little two-parter here so i'm gonna be going over my recommended pc build for people coming uh to pc for destiny 2 with the arrival of shadow keep and cross save so my, i'm gonna go over my recommendation for 1080p 1080p gaming but also allowing to do some streaming so be a nice versatile setup that's not gonna break the bank the second part is I will get into uh, my Destiny 2 in-game settings. We'll open up Destiny 2, we'll jump in, look at my mouse and keyboard settings, and then also look at my graphic settings. But starting with the PC build, we're gonna get right into that right now. And starting with the CPU, I chose the AMD Ryzen 5 3600X 6 core processor. The reason I chose this processor is because it offers good versatility in terms of streaming and gaming, great frames. Um, if you want to stream off the processor, you can do that as well. Uh, it also comes with a CPU cooler, which is nice. So I don't need to spend extra money on a CPU cooler because one comes with it. Is it the best CPU cooler I've ever seen? Absolutely not, but it saves us a little money. But if you want to spend the extra money to buy additional CPU cooler, you could do that. Moving on to the motherboard, I looked at the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi. The reason I chose this motherboard is because Gigabyte has been really great about supporting their motherboards with this uh, third gen Ryzen launch, so they've been really on top of it. Uh, I also chose this motherboard because of the Wi-Fi. So I like the Wi-Fi aspect because not everybody can sit right next to their router and pl directly plug in their PC to ethernet. So this also gives you the ability to be a little bit versatile in terms of where I can put my PC because I can connect the Wi-Fi from anywhere in my house or apartment, wherever I'm living. So that's why I like this one because of support and because of the Wi-Fi. Moving on to memory, 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 memory. So memory, biggest thing you want to care about is you want to try to get 16 gigs. You could probably get by with eight, but 16 gigs is usually pretty good for most people. You're, you're very rarely, if ever, gonna go over that. I don't think I've ever gone over 16 gigs of RAM ever. Uh, I, the reason I chose the G Skill Trident Z RGB is because it looks really cool. But you can honestly go with any memory, but the main thing you're gonna care about is the total memory. So try to get the 16 gigs, because again, it's not only gonna future proof you, um, you know, going forward, but it also helps because if some games are more RAM heavy than others, so that's gonna support that as well. So if you're playing something other than Destiny, you're not gonna have to worry about maxing out your RAM. Moving on to our storage here, I looked at the Samsung 970 EVO one terabyte or a thousand gig NVMe solid state drive. Kept it simple here, guys. So this allows you to have basically the fastest type of solid state. So what this is gonna, what this is gonna do is make your games open up quicker, your PC is gonna start faster. You're gonna feel the speed of this type of solid state drive, the NVMe specifically, throughout the, your entire computer. And you wanna do the one terabyte if possible because you could do 256 or 500, but you'll probably notice that's gonna fill up very, very quickly. So this ties again into that future proofing aspect of this whole build I'm looking at here. I want you guys to get something that's gonna last, not something that's gonna just, just get you into the PC market and then you're gonna to need to be upgrading three or four months later and spending even more money. So that's what I'm looking at here. But again, you can always adjust any of these parts if anything here is out of budget, of course. Moving on to the video card. The video card and the CPU are gonna be the two heaviest hitters when it comes to cost. I have two selections here for the video card. The one from the AMD camp, one from the NVIDIA camp. From the NVIDIA camp, I have the EVGA GeForce RTX 2060 Super. And then from AMD, I have Sapphire Radeon RX 5700 XT. These are both, in terms of performance, very, very close. Also very similar price. They're obviously direct competitors to each other. This really depends what you're looking for. For me, I go with the NVIDIA card because they these newer RTX cards have a chip on them that allows you to stream basically directly from the card. That's a gross oversimplification, but uh, what it allows you to do with that chip though is stream from the card without negatively or minimizing the impact to in-game performance. So I'm not sacrificing a whole bunch of frames to stream off my graphics card, which is a huge plus. But the Radeon uh, RX 5700 XT is definitely another great buy. Um, AMD being very, very competitive in the price to performance ratio here as well. So either one, you can't go wrong. If you're looking to stream though, I would definitely recommend the NVIDIA RTX 2060 Super. Moving on to the case. For the case, I chose the Cooler Master H500. 
I like this case because it has two big fans that push a ton of air through the computer, keep your CPU and GPU nice and cool. But ultimately the case is gonna be very subjective. Um, just try to find something that from your research has great cooling and is also easy to build and those are gonna be two big pluses. Moving on to the power supply, I chose the VGA Supernova G3, 650 watt gold certified, meaning it's just gonna be a reliable power supply and it's gonna give us enough headroom. Uh, as you can see on PC part picker, it gives us our estimated wattage of 414. This is 650, so have a nice headroom if we wanna overclock or mess around with volta voltages, something a little more complex that we're definitely not getting into right now. But this is my overall recommendation for that 1080p versatile gaming build for Destiny 2 and other. Uh, now we're gonna jump into Destiny 2 and look at my graphic and keyboard and my settings. Let's get there. All right, guys, jumping into the second part of this video, and that's gonna be my Destiny 2 uh, PC settings, specifically my graphic settings here. So we're just gonna jump right in. Um, I'll go over my controls br uh, briefly as well. So for my look sensitivity, I get this question all the time in my comments. My look sensitivity is I play at nine. I'll fluctuate between nine and 10 uh, with the ADS modifier of one. So this is like how fast it feels when you ADS or aim down sights. I just keep this normal. Um, and again, nine for here. So because the reason is, the reason my look sensitivity of mouse is so high, I play on 400 DPI. So I play in a lower DPI. I use my in-game sensitivity to compensate for that, to kind of balance it out. That way it allows me to stay as accurate as possible. Um, if you play on something like 800 DPI or higher, you're probably want to lower your look sensitivity down uh, to compensate again. Aim smoothing, I would turn that off. Um, going into my key binds here, I kind of play with this a lot, but I'll kind of just scroll through this so you guys can see my key binds. Um, I do bind my melee and my grenade to my mouse button, my you know back mouse and front mouse for my grenade. See down here, yeah, grenade. And I put my super on my scroll wheel, so I click down on my scroll wheel to do my super. And then uh, I try to use one, two, three to switch between weapons here. And then all this stuff is like whatever. You guys can slow it down and take a peek at some of this and see what my keybinds are. Um, if you want to copy those and use this kind of like a baseline and then change it to whatever feels most comfortable for you. Um, jumping into what everybody's I'm sure super curious about is my video settings. So for me, I use a 240 hertz monitor. So I try to get as close to that as possible. So I'm trying to maximize um, the frame rate of my monitor or the refresh rate, I'm sorry. Uh, so for that, I turn VSync off. VSync will kill your frames. Don't use it, don't do it. Uh, I play at 1920 by 1080. Um, frame rate, I do cap my frame rate at 237 because I don't wanna like overstress my computer and do, I have G-Sync enabled. So when you go over your monitors, refresh rate, that can actually have a negative impact in terms of input lag. So I just kind of cap it out at 237. So just below my monitors refresh rate. Uh, for field of view, I do 105. Um, and so 105, what field of view does is basically makes um, the amount you can see on your screen larger and gives you like puts more of the environment on your screen. So a lot of times people be like, oh man, how are you moving so fast? Uh, I'm not really moving that much faster. It's just, I can see a lot more of the space around me because of my higher field of view versus console. So it seems like I'm skating or moving faster, faster especially on uh, Warlock. Green bounds and brightness, I mean, that's kind of like automatically set up. Obviously you can adjust that to whatever's good for your monitor uh, or environment. Uh, moving on to our advanced video settings. So before I get into this, I try to balance having really, really good performance. So getting a ton of frames with making sure the game still looks good. I still want to make sure when I'm recording video and producing video guys for you guys are streaming that the game doesn't look like crap. So I, always, I try to find a nice balance. So for me, I look at the things that are going to deteriorate or have the biggest impact on my frame rate. And then anything that doesn't really have a high impact on my frame rate, I'm going to keep that high. So as much as I can keep things looking good, I will. Anti-aliasing, you can turn this off if you wanted to. Um, I didn't see a really big difference in my frame rate. And I hate how it basically what anti-aliasing does is like if you if I axe out, like the ship, the edges right here will look really jagged and weird and it just like bugs me. So I, I, I leave it on um, and I use SMAA cause that's just gonna make it look the best. 
uh, screen space, ambient occlusion. It's kind of like the lighting in the game, I guess, if I'm putting it simply. I just keep that off. I don't really notice a difference, but it does help with your frames. Uh, texture is going to do very little to negatively impact your frame, so I keep that at 16. Texture quality, again, keep that at highest because it doesn't really impact my frames. Uh, but something that does impact your frames is shadow quality. If I could turn this off, I would, but instead I just put it to lowest. Um, this give you, will give you a nice boost in frames. It just makes, makes the shadows on the ground and around places look less detailed, which is totally fine with me. Depth of field, I turn off. It kind of makes things look blurry in the distance. Um, I don't really care about that. So I turn it off because again, that has another significant impact to frame rate. Uh, environmental detail distance, character detail distance, foilage detail, or sorry, these two, environmental and character, don't really impact frame rate, so I keep them on high. Foilage detail distance, so the amount of like foilage and like crap out in the environment um, that the game has to render will be a heavy hitter when it comes to your frames. But we wanna keep that nice and low. Um, so I put that low, and I like I said, a lot of this stuff I don't even notice. I just noticed the increase to my frames up here on the top right. Um, light shafts. From my experience don't really have any impact uh, neither does foliage shadow distance on your frame rate or it's very minimal uh, motion blur i turn off so it makes keeps things from when you're running around and doing stuff from looking super blurry i don't want that i don't want anything that's impeding my vision or keeping me from playing at a high level so i keep that off wind impulse just kind of makes how the wind affects the environment around you look more natural and normal um, I kind of like that. I like to have like that natural feeling where like seeing a tree uh, like moving and stuff it feels like more immersive. So I leave that on and it very minimal impact to your frames. Um, lastly, render resolution. I keep mine 100 um, percent HDR off because my monitor doesn't even have the ability and chromatic aberration and film grain. I keep uh, off. Uh, so this is like my settings to get like the best performance to quality ratio, in my opinion. Um, but I play with these settings all the time, honestly. So for your PC or your rig, like these settings will vary. Um, but the, just know that the biggest hitters on this are gonna be screen space, ambient inclusion, foliage, detail, distance, um, and shadow quality. These are gonna be the ones that really, really hit, sorry, end up the field are gonna be the heavy hitters when it comes to your frame. So try playing with those ones first, and then you can kind of fine tune there to get the most frames. Um, possible on your computer uh, but that's gonna do it for this video guys i know it was a longer one having the build and the settings but i want to get this information out to you guys so as you guys are coming over to pc uh, i'm sending you guys up for success to have the best experience the best quality with uh the best performance possible uh, so let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this type of content um, or any questions you have for me around my settings or my personal build on my PC. I'd be happy to answer them. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like and subscribe as it's a free way to support me. And I will catch you guys in the next one.